if you all caught my premiere a short while ago, 15, 10, 15 minutes ago, where I did a reaction video to uh, Hannah Reloaded. Uh, but that's great that uh, if you did watch it, thanks for your viewership. That woman's demeanor is very common across the fiction system. People who are ensconced in that system. <clears throat> it's almost like they can't help themselves. They make fun of something they cannot understand or do not understand or choose not to understand. All right. Some might say, you know, I, I just this association just popped into my head that some could say, well, it's the same thing with religion. If you don't understand God, then how can you form an opinion or a position on God or something like that? But no, that's not the same thing. This woman literally knows nothing about correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar. And she betrayed that at the beginning when she tried, when she fumbled, when she mangled Colin David Eiffelwin, Colin Miller's name. Now me, I don't really talk about religion all that much. I do touch on it from time to time in my psychology videos, specifically like monotheism and people that choose to participate in the concept known as God. I do have a position to speak on that if I wish, because I did seven years in a Catholic school. I've read the Bible multiple times. I've done deep religious studies throughout my life. I've been on this earth over 51 years. I've had a lot of time to research and study. And then when I came into correct sentence structure, I was able to credential what a fact was for me. And the concept of a God does not fit into my criteria for what a fact is. Can't certify, can't provide a continuance of the evidence based on assumption, presumption. Now I'm not getting on anybody's case that chooses to participate with that type of thing. The point I'm making here is it's not the same thing is someone passing judgment on correct sentence structure that knows nothing about it. I have years and years of study under my belt. My connection keeps resetting. My internet connection, I have all the bars on mine. So it could be on your end. Because on my end, there is no lag. Uh... And I'm checking my, my Wi-Fi here is full power, full strength, full blast. So I have uh, I have great signal over here. Is it the same way for anybody else out there? Is your connection steady? Or is it just Galaxy 13 user? Does anybody have any questions, grammar questions, or anything else you want to talk about? Hope you caught the replay of the TikTok live stream as well, where I talked about the claim of the live life. I'll just reiterate here. In order to do that workshop, I think it's gonna we're going to have to jump through a few ho hoops to do that workshop. Because in order for me to share those mechanics and um, basically be able to sit with my own conscience about it, there has to be a very stringent vetting process. So that's going to take a little bit of time, I think. So the claim of the live life workshop would definitely have to be, if you're interested in it, you would have to contact me at jasonmatthewg17 at gmail.com. And then we would have to schedule a brief consultation where I test your correct sentence structured knowledge. If I don't know you, and I don't know your knowledge level, then that would have to occur. And then you would have to pass the test, which if you know correct sentence structure, if you have a rudimentary closure on it, you'll be able to finish the test in 10 minutes or less, 10, 15 minutes or less. Easy. If you have closure on the grammar or rudimentary closure. And if you do that, then I can put you on the short list 
for attending the Claim of the Live Life workshop, where I would then share with you the complete set of mechanics to create a Claim of the Live Life. The postal mechanics, banking mechanics, flag mechanics, grammar mechanics, all that stuff. And show you how to make create a Claim of the Live Life with yourself as the authority with three Live Life Claim witnesses on it. With correct grammar, I would also provide the template. But first, you have to pass the test because you have to have a foundation in order to build something strong and solid. And that foundation is the grammar. So that, that's what would have to happen for the Live Life Claim Workshop. And again, you know, that's going to narrow it down a lot because there's not too many people that are going to want to take the test. And everyone I've given the test to has failed it. <laughs> it's a very hard test. But I can tell, you know, if someone, <clears throat> I can tell just from how long I've been doing this and how many people I've taught, I'll be able to tell right away if you possess enough closure and enough knowledge to be able to navigate safely using a claim of the live life in a situation under duress. Not only do you have to have the knowledge, the grammar knowledge, but you also have to be able to use it. It has to be on hand and you have to be able to pull it out and use it in a situation. Right? It's like, uh, and again, to go into the analogy of martial arts, you can be in the gym and and you can practice repetition. You can shadow box, right? You can hit the heavy bag. You can practice a thousand kicks, um, do duck walks, do burpees. And you get somebody that can throw a perfect right hand. You get someone who can put, throw a perfect left hook. They're so great with their form when they're shadow boxing. And then you actually throw them in there against an opponent. And they fold. They go blank. They start doing this and and turning their head away, and and they just totally blank out. That's no good. You got to be able to have that stuff ready and use it under duress. And the only way to do that <clears throat> is to practice, 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 practice. My coach used to say, "Repetition is the mother of technique." So that's another important thing. You have to be able to use it for the salvation of the mankind is with the faith. Whoa. Message retracted. Well, Galaxy 13 user. Are you making a claim for mankind? Did mankind give you permission to make a claim for it as a collective? Because with correct sentence structure, one may only make a claim for oneself. I certainly didn't give you a permission to make a claim for me, and I consider myself part of mankind. So be very careful with that. Correct sentence structure. <clears throat> you can only make a claim for yourself. You can't make a claim for me or anyone else unless they give you consent. And I certainly don't give anyone consent to make a claim for me. Hell no. Hell to the no. So good, uh, good uh, choice in retracting that message. Because that's a trespass. Maybe your salvation lies with whatever you were about to type. But me, I don't need salvage. I'm the salver. I do the sal salvage claims, bro. The law of salvage. I do the salvage claims, bro. <clears throat> I provide salvation for whatever I choose to salvage. And just what salvation means, it's a contract with salvage. That's all it means. If you parse it. So where was I? That kind of threw me. Threw me for a second there. Yeah, be very careful when you make a claim. You can't, you don't make claims for other people without their permission. 
that's trespass. The fiction system, that's fiction mentality. The fiction system wants to make claims for you. Edwin Jones, the law of salvage, as administered in the high court of admiralty and the county courts, Edwin Jones. See, to me, this is backwards, but maybe to you, it's not. This book is from... 1870. I have endeavored in the following pages to place before the profession the principles of the law of maritime salvage with a sketch of the proceedings in a salvage suit in the High Court of Admiralty in the county courts. The close resemblance that exists between the law of England and that of the United States upon this subject has induced me by a frequent reference throughout the work to American authorities to aim at making the book equally useful to the American as to the English lawyer. In the appendix are collected these portions of the merchant shipping and other acts which bear upon salvage with such as the forms of the admiralty court and the county courts as are likely to be found useful. Edwin Jones, 8. King's Bench Walk Temple, September 1870. So everything you need to know about the laws of salvage, right there. But of course, uh, I don't stop there. I go further in the maritime fraud with Paul Todd. Which this is a more modern book. I got uh, the Universal Dictionary of the Marine, which is from this is really old. I don't even think there's a year on this thing. 1784. And then a dictionary of international, of shipping international trade terms and things like that. All very useful if you're going to be navigating the sea of space. I know actually, maybe you finished it on your end, Galaxy 13 user, but you didn't finish it here. So therefore, no one here got to see what you were saying. But if you say, never mind, then never mind. If it doesn't matter to you, then why should it matter to anybody else, right? You only share what you share. It's by consent. So those books I just showed are, you know, if, if you're inclined towards such things, they're just little useful pieces of data that you can incorporate into your correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar, construct, terms that you can use in your contracts. Well, of course, all the positive performance uh, terms. Wow, Galaxy 13 user, you are deleting messages at a furious pace, bro. What's going on here? So anyways, uh, what, what else can we talk about? Since I'm looking through my library here, let me see if I can find anything else that's useful. Oh, well, of course, there's this. If uh, if you're going to be navigating through the fiction system, this is always a good one to check out. 
Robert's Rules. <laughs> if you're trying to educate yourself on medical things, medical toxicology, uh, dictionary of economics. It's always good to know about your transportation fiction laws in your area. <sighs> and for those of you out there into the esoteric, it's good to know about those venues if you're interested in keys. As you may or may not know, Colin David Ipenwin, Colin Miller claim to be a key master. And the tarot are the keys. Well, they're representative of the keys. Okay? Keep that in mind. And, of course, you got to have a few of these around. Styles manuals. This is from uh, this one's from 1903. And this is actually my favorite. It's not an authority or anything, but it's actually my favorite, the Strunk and White. I've had this since college in 1996. Not this particular copy, but a copy of it. <sighs> Maritime Law, Christopher Hill. Nineteen eighty five. When was this originally published? Nineteen eighty one. This book was <clears throat> this book was checked out of a library on October twenty second, nineteen ninety six. I'd hate to see the late fees on this sucker, huh? Aber Conway Library, <laughs> come and get it, bro. <laughs> Did you ever try to get a reward for salvaging tour passport? What's a tour passport? I don't think I have a tour passport. Again, a lot of people have a misconception about correct sentence structure. You can't, I've never seen anyone get something using correct sentence structure. What correct sentence structure does is it stops trespass. It can't force someone to give you something. And why would I want a reward? for something. I mean, if someone wants to give me a reward, that, that's cool. I'm fine with that, but I'm not going to try and force someone. I mean, think about the psychology of what you said there. Did you ever try to get a reward? Why would I try to get a reward unless someone offers it to me? If someone offers a reward, if I offer you a reward because you found, say, for example, my CPAS C treaty fell out of my folder and you find it and you bring it to me, I'll give you a reward. But if you say, I found your CPAS C treaty, I'll give it back to you for a hundred bucks. That's not a reward. <laughs> That's a ransom. Not the same thing, bro. The reason I delete the message is because I'm typing from my mobile and been making lots of typos when I press send. Well, I can relate to that. 
Um, it's tough typing on a mobile phone for sure. But again, what I read from what you started, you were making a claim for mankind. And unless mankind in totality gave you consent to make that claim for them, you are trespassing. Now, if you would have said something like, for the salvation of the Galaxy 13 user is with the blah, blah, blah. Now you're making a claim for Galaxy 13 user, whoever you are, which I'm sure Galaxy 13 user is not your correct name. It's a nom de guerre. So if you would have done something like that, then there's no issue. But to make a claim for someone else is a trespass. I got another I got another Crowley book here. Interesting title, isn't I have not read this yet. Uh, this is on my to-do list. The Book of Lies, which is also falsely called Breaks, the Wanderings or Falsifications of the One Thought of Freighter Perdurabo, in parentheses Aleister Crowley, which thought itself, which thought is itself untrue. Break, break, break at the foot of thy shoes, O sea, and I would that I could utter the thoughts that arise in me. Oh, that's funny. Ordo Templi Orientis. The Book of Lies is Aleister Crowley's masterwork. My association with Freemasonry was therefore destined to be more fertile than almost any other study. This guy. This guy is such a drama llama. Let me tell you what. Aleister Crowley was, had a flair for the dramatic, bro. For real. Ha. People get so caught up in that BS. Well, okay. I'm not, I can't say it's BS. To me, that's my perception of a lot of it is BS. But I will say that the tarot is not BS. In and of itself, it is not BS. It's just a lot of people don't know about it, and so therefore maybe it scares them. And they'll use terms like witchcraft, which – think about this. All right. You have – I'll go into this whole history thing here for real quick. I've talked about this before. You have a certain set of people. We'll call them Christians, which Christians are actually – a subset of Judaism because it all comes from the, the Torah, the, the first five books of the Bible. There was a religion based upon that. It was a monotheistic religion, a control system. And out of that came Islam and Christianity. Okay. Both monotheistic religions. And a very powerful militant section of those went into different countries and conquered them. For example, they went into Europe and they were pagans in Europe. And the Christians went in there and just killed and genocided the Europeans and forced them to convert to Christianity. Just the same way that they did it to the Native Americans in North America. They came in and forced the Native Americans to convert to Christianity. On pain of death, they were not allowed to speak their native tongue. <clears throat> they were not allowed to practice their native uh, spiritual rituals. 
They were corralled and herded, made to cut their hair, go to reservations, all done by the Christians. Same thing in Europe. Same thing all over the world. In the name of God or Jesus or whatever you want to call it. So this whole thing is based on an assumption presumption. It has been used to gain land, to gain wealth, and control people. It's the biggest psyop that's ever been perpetrated on mankind, I think. You get people to believe in something that they can't prove, and then you can get them to commit atrocities against each other. You can get them to hate others. You can get them to think that this or that person is their enemy because they don't believe the same thing you do. Galaxy 13 user, it's my name. So when you were birthed into this domain, you came out and the doctor said to your mother, what are you going to name this baby? And your mother said, Galaxy 13 user. <laughs> <clears throat> I tell you what, when I when I went into the public in February of 2018 and I started using my correct name, Colin Jason, Evan Matthew, Colin Glass, it was scary, man. It really was. I'm basically what you could consider to be an introvert in psychological terms. At heart, I'm an introvert. Um, throughout my life, though, I've been in order to progress. And through jobs and things like that, I was put in positions where I had to be a public speaker. Like I was a manager at a very, very large private golf community in Arizona that has seven 18-hole golf courses and uh, a spa, a horse ranch, all kinds of stuff. And I worked on five of those seven golf courses as a manager. And as a manager, I had to manage 25 to 30 men and women, mostly men, multicultural from Kazakhstan, Africa, China, Cuba, Mexico, uh, Burma. Well, they don't call it Burma now. It's something else. Um, Thailand, all different languages, and I had to be able to communicate to them every morning at like 4.30, 5 o'clock in the morning. I had to stand in front of a dry erase board and give them direction as to what they were going to do throughout the day to each person, and I had to be able to keep them in line, make sure they did their job, and got it done in a timely fashion. Through those years of experience, it really – it's invaluable I'm, because I'm basically able to communicate with anyone, no matter what language you speak. If we don't speak the same language, I can still articulate to you what I'm trying to say. And I can probably get a basic comprehension of what you're trying to say to me. So that kind of prepped me for what I'm doing now, where, you know, I can deal with all different types of personalities. I'm not easily angered. I'm not easily frustrated. It's just all fun and games, pretty much. It's no big deal. I got pretty thick skin, too, if I may say so myself. I like to think I do. Maybe some people think I don't. But I think that says more about them than me. Nobody has any grammar questions, though, which is interesting. I always say that. Because tell you what, man. If In 2017, when I was trying to learn this stuff... If David Wynn Miller would have been doing live streams, I'd have been the first one there. I'd have had my notification bell clicked to all. And I'd have had my notifications turned on. If I saw him go live, I'd have dropped what I was doing, got on that live stream, and just started shooting questions. Boom, boom, boom. What's this? What's that? Why is this? Why is that? Why are you doing this? Why are you doing that? I'd have been first in line. Thanks for the coffee, XR Peaky Blind AR. I appreciate that, 
brother. Much gratitude. Salute. That always makes me feel good. It does. It really does. You know, it's like I've put thousands, literally thousands of hours into creating the over 800 videos on this channel. I know some people are going to think I sound like a broken record, but I am proud of it. Over 800 videos having to do a correct sentence structure here, editing them, hours and hours of editing, putting them together, creating them, shooting them, getting the lighting as correct as I can get it. Because I'm a one-man show. Nobody's helping me do this. I do this all myself. In addition to the workshops and the consultations and the seminars and things like that. It's a 24-7, 365, you know, performance. And I, when someone sends me a coffee like that, $4.99, it, it feels good. I have to admit it does because I see that someone values what I'm doing. I know a lot, most people out there are in it for freebies. They don't really think. You know, if they are not a content creator themselves, they how can they know the amount of time and energy that goes into creating a YouTube channel and cultivating a body of work? How would they know that? They wouldn't know that. So, again, much gratitude. Andrew, thank you, Cuzzy, bro. As far as I know, all the apostles were killed by Rome. I believe only one apostle lived. Well... <laughs> Look, how do you know that? The only way that history can be certified is if you were there. If you weren't there, then it's a presumption assumption. You are choosing to believe in that, that a such thing as apostles existed. There is no proof. Unless you were there. That's the whole thing about history. Look at the word history. It's his story. And most times it's written, written by the winners, right? History has been modified, just like the grammar has been modified. There's really no way to certify any of it, to be clear on any of it. It just isn't. And as far as the Bible and things like that, I mean, the Lord of the Rings, quite frankly, is a better and more believable read for me. Interesting side note, the word apostle is no contract because it's a vowel in front of a consonant at the beginning of a word. And I've read pretty much just everything that's available pertaining, you know, and relating to the Bible. I've read the Bible multiple times. I've read the lost books of the Bible, the forgotten books of e, uh, Eden, the Gospel of Q, the Gospel of, you know, the, the Mary Magdalene stuff, all, uh, everything. I even went through that whole uh, series of books. What was it called from the 80s? It was called Holy Blood, Holy Grail. You managed the golf course Caddyshack. <laughs> That's an awesome movie. For real. I love that movie. Although the golf course I was at was nothing like that. No way. They had a massively controlling HR department. I also learned a lot about the fiction system from that HR department. And I will say this. To use a word that you used, Galaxy 13 user... HR departments, when they are operating at the highest level, are a form of what you might call witchcraft. There's some kind of sorcery going on in there, some sort of energy going on in there, manipulation. Think about that term, human resources, besides the fact that it's an adjective pronoun, human resources. So what is a resource? I know it's no source. But in the fiction sense, a resource is something that basically is what? Held in reserve to be used and expended. It's expendable. And then you put human in front of it. 
So if you are a human resource, you're expendable. They don't care about you. They only care about you to the point that you do your job and make them money. And that's it. And when you stop that, when you start not performing to the level that they want you to, you're out. Human resource. You just use you up and throw you away. Facts. I'd like to give a shout out <clears throat> to someone out there that uh, without whom what I do would not be possible. And that is my beautiful wife. Who is Native American Mohawk Algonquin. Big shout out to her. Also, my friend, brother, and tutor, colon Raven, hyphen Farhad, hyphen Tohidi, colon Aferin. Big shout out to him as well. Correct sentence structure question. How do you use your port claim with the port authorities? What is the interaction between you two? Can you describe? I think you're talking about my port authority claim. And quite frankly, I have not had to ever use that in a fiction setting. The only thing that I ever really use going through fiction ports is my C pass C treaty and by extension claim of the live life. I've never had to use a port authority claim. But again, you have to know what a port authority claim is. What port? Are you claiming authority of? I remember back in 2018 or 2019, I sort of got into a back and forth with Colin Russell hyphen J Colin Gould via email about Port Authority, where I told him I claim I had a Port Authority claim, or no, actually I didn't tell him that. Someone else told him that, or something, and he articulated to me. How do you have a Port Authority claim? He said, because I, Russell J. Gould, own all ports and quays on planet Earth. He claimed ownership of all ports and quays on planet Earth. It might coolly on it back to him was, no, you don't. My Port Authority claim is my port of sensation. It's my live life claim number. It's my claim of the live life, my port of sensation. I am the authority of that, not you. You don't own it, bro. And I, and he shut up. He never mentioned it again. So that is what the port I'm claiming authority of is my port of sensation. No one can take that away from you. You, Galaxy 13 user, you are also your the authority of your sensations. Quite literally, no one else can be authority of your sensations. No one can tell you how you're feeling, what you're sensing, what you're tasting, what you're smelling, what you're seeing, what you're hearing, so on and so forth. So that's what you're, if you're claiming port authority, that for me, that's what a port authority is. Who wrote the Gospels? I don't know who wrote the Gospels. From what I've read and the research I've done, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John certainly didn't write them. Try some uh, Jesuit. It was like, yeah, let's write these five things and call them synoptic gospels. When really there's nothing synoptic about them at all. <laughs> and quite frankly, I don't give a shit who wrote them. It has no practical value or meaning to my life. Now the words, like when you get those uh, New Testament uh, copies that have the red print where it only shows Jesus's words. <clears throat> Those have a little bit of value to them as far as philosophy goes. But think about this. Think about the one quote that's very famous where he says, give unto Caesar what is Caesar's and give unto the Lord what is the Lord's. 
So what he's saying is pay your taxes, right? Pay your taxes and then also pay the church. So Jesus was a company man. He was a yes man, whoever he was. He was telling the people, you know, turn the other cheek. Don't fight. Don't fight. Turn the other cheek. Someone slaps you, let them slap the other cheek. Don't fight because you'll be rewarded in some other mythical land past death. The biggest con, man, one of the biggest cons that has ever been perpetrated. Tell people to pay their taxes, pay the church, and don't fight. Don't defend yourself. Crazy, bro. All right, Andrew, thank you. Do you know Anna Von Reitz? No, I don't know Anna Von Reitz. I know of her, though. I know who she is, and I basically, I have a rudimentary comprehension of her, what she promulgates. She sees parse syntax grammar as dog Latin and refers to Romley. Yeah, neither one of those people have closure on the grammar. I can tell you that for sure. Anna von Reitz doesn't know the first thing about correct sentence structure. Neither does Romley Stewart. And I've done videos about Romley Stewart. I actually offered to have a meeting with Romley Stewart if he was interested to have a meeting, to meet him fair and square on a geometric level playing field and a video consultation or whatever and have a discussion with him about quantum grammar, but he wanted no part of it. Because like most people who, when they don't understand something, I feel like they have a knee-jerk reaction where they automatically dismiss it, which is very interesting, you know? Not very open-minded. Romley Stewart, from my perception, from what I've seen of his material, he gives jurisdiction of his grammar to a fiction styles manual. <clears throat> he gives authority of his words to the fiction. I don't do that. I use fiction sources to certify the meanings of my facts, but the ultimate authority of my facts is me. And if you want to contract with me, then you have to agree with my terms and conditions and the meanings that I bank in my facts. <clears throat> and if you don't agree with the way I do things in my terms and conditions and you don't agree with the meanings that I bank in my facts, well, then you and I aren't going to be contracting. It's that simple. It's no sweat off my back. I'm not going to contract with people that give jurisdiction to the fiction system, though, because that's the whole thing with common law, too. I mean, common law is fiction through and through. Now, there's many people that have success with common law. More power to them. I'm a big fan of whatever works. If that works for you, do it. <clears throat> if that's what gets the fiction monkey off of your back, cool. But it doesn't work for me. No, thank you. It's my comprehension of the story of Anna von Reitz is that I guess she spent like three or four days with Russell J. Gould, I guess. And supposedly going by both sides of the story, supposedly he was trying to teach her the grammar. And... By the end of those three or four days, now this is a guess on my part, ladies and gentlemen, because I wasn't there. I can't certify any of it. All I have are the words that she said and the words that he said. She said, he said. So I'm using that as a knowledge cultivated guess for what I'm about to say. It is my guess that she saw that he didn't know what he was talking about. That he didn't have closure on what he was trying to share with her. Grammatically. About the grammar specifically. And so she probably saw him as a bullshit artist. 
and dismissed it out of hand and she had a bad experience and that's that. I'm thinking, and again, like I said about that Hannah Reloaded uh, individual that I just did the reaction video on, I feel like if I sat down, if Anna Von Reitz would contact me via email, if she was interested, which I highly doubt she is, but if she was ever interested, if she ever saw videos like this and she contacted me at jasonmatthewg17 at gmail.com and she had questions, I'd be more than happy to set up a confidential consultation with her, a video consult. And she could ask me whatever she wants. And I think, I think that I would open her mind up to the reality of what quantum grammar actually is and what it can do. Because I'm 100% confident that I know what I'm talking about when it comes to the grammar. Maybe not anybody, anything else in life, but about grammar, yes. I can say that I know what I'm talking about, 100%. So. Not that that would ever happen, not that she would ever email me. And I have no reason to email her. I mean, the only reason that you would contact someone is usually because you want something from them, right? That's why people contact me because they want, they have a question, they want me to answer, or they want to apply for a workshop, they want to learn, they want me to be their tutor. So therefore, they have to agree to my terms and conditions. It's the same thing. If I want something from someone, I contact them and I agree to their terms and conditions. Anna Von Reitz has nothing I want, so why would I contact her? Every time I've tried to do that, too, it's it's a, it's never turned out, you know, the way that I thought it would. Like when I was trying to work with Romley Stewart or trying to contact him, he immediately dismissed it, didn't want nothing to do with it. He said, I remember what was the first thing he said. He said that my name is Romley Stewart and I make no claims. Bro, just by saying my name is Romley Stewart and I make no claims, you've made two claims. You've claimed made a claim of your name and you've made a claim of no claim. So he's just committed two logical fallacies right there. So that tells me all I need to know about an individual like that. Everything is contract. Everything is a claim. And that's the thing about me. I try to think of everything very logically very logical minded and oh to go back to the russell j gould thing and the anna von reitz he said he said she said thing the reason why i say that i think that my guess is that she saw him for a bs artist is because he doesn't have closure on the grammar he doesn't have closure on what he's saying he, he kind of comes at it from my perception from a might makes right position like if you look at anybody who participates with any of his authorized uh, representatives, like the Syntax Learning Center, like how do they know what an adverb is? He literally gives them a paper with a list of adverbs. And he says, these are adverbs. So when they say, how do you know that's an adverb? The student will say, well, Russell said so. It's on this sheet, as if that means anything. There's no certification other than what he said. It's a logical fallacy, appeal to authority. And if you learn the trivia method, you learn all about logical fallacies and how they're used to control people and manipulate people. So I think Anna Von Reitz saw that. Like he's using a... Because I said so mentality. Like you say to your children, clean your room. And the child says, why? He said, because I said so. Not because, well, it's unsanitary, my son, to have a room that's dirty and filthy and dusty and grimy and blah, blah, blah. It's unsanitary. It's unsightly. Um, it can cause bacteria blah, blah, blah. You give them reasons. You can give reasons for cleaning your room, but no, it's, I said so. No good, bro. That's why I can certify everything that I say about the grammar. And if you look at Russell J. Gould's public contracts on his websites, as I've done in other audit videos, 
I point out the multiple, multiple errors on all of his documents, incorrect positional sequencing, incorrect use of italics, incorrect spacing, incorrect uh, particles of negation in his facts. The list goes on and on and on. But hey, you know, I'm not here to tell anybody what to do. You can make your own choice, your own choices about what you want to do. I love guys like Daryl, man. He's a good guy. He speaks his mind and he's a good guy. And he exudes humility, which is something I attempt to cultivate in, in and of myself. I try to cultivate humility. Whether I am humble or not, that's not up to me to decide. It's up to the people that I contract with to decide on that. But I do try to cultivate it, and I see that in him. And so that's why I appreciate and have much gratitude for solid human beings like Daryl Bennett. And he is not afraid to use his name, which is huge on the Internet. Because a lot of people just want to hide behind Nam de Guerre's, you know, so they control or do whatever they're going to do. Does Biden know syntax grammar? Well, ego 0117, I think the more important question is, does Biden know how to put together a sentence at all? <laughs> Come on, man. I know that Colin David Ifewin, Colin Miller claimed a long time ago that he taught Kamala Harris correct sentence structure, communication, policy, syntax, grammar. But I have very, I find it very difficult to participate with that as being true. I really do. Because, again, I mean, you think about Biden and the way that he the way that he speaks and the way that he conducts himself. And then you look at Kamala Harris and the way she conducts herself. At least with Trump. All right. You look at Trump. And I know that linguistics experts said that Trump speaks at a fourth grade level. The way that he puts together sentences is at a fourth grade level. But they make sense. Like he actually says something and I find him highly entertaining. I love listening to Trump give speeches, man. He has me rolling in the aisles when I listen to that guy speak. He doesn't have the oratory skills of a Barack Obama. But I'd rather listen to Trump speak because just of the shit that he says that you never know what's going to come out of his mouth. It's hilarious. And watching Biden is like watching a train wreck. Like you're like, when's it when's it going to come off the rails here? You're like, but you never get that sense with Trump. You, it's never going to be a train wreck with him. He always has full control of what he's saying. And he always has a, a good command of his audience. Like he knows how to perform because he is a performer. He guy's an actor. He was an actor on The Apprentice. I mean, he's an actor, so they're all actors. But to get back to Kamala Harris, she's really no better than Biden because she never really says anything. <laughs> it's like, you know, so she'll be talking about, yeah, we, we, we got to come together as a community because this hurricane is coming. And as a community, we're together. And when we're together, we form communities. And when communities form together, we're stronger. And we're stronger because we're a community and we're together. And when we're together, we're stronger because we're a community. And the best thing you can do to prepare for this hurricane as a community and to get stronger is to get your boosters. Because when you get your boosters, you become a stronger community. And when you're a community, you're stronger and you can better prepare for a hurricane. I mean, this is the way she talks. It's like just going around in circles. Like it reminds me of a hamster in a wheel, basically. 
I watched the RJG videos on YouTube and I, he was funny, especially when RJG acts like a tough guy in the end. To me, seems like Jerry Springer participant. I like that analogy. I like that analogy. That's great. I've given the analogy of WWE wrestling. Like he cuts promos. That's the way I see it. He cuts promos when he kicks stuff and he starts yelling and screaming. Man, the entertainment value is off the chain with that guy. Um, but I will say on a serious note, if you can find Russell J. Gould videos prior to 2016, from 2016 back, if you find Russell J. Gould videos, they are very informational. There's a lot of good knowledge contained in those videos about postal mechanics, shipping mechanics, banking mechanics, um, postal mechanics, you know, very good. But when you get into 2017 and beyond, not so much. He's, it's almost like he's a different person. But I like that analogy, the Jerry, the Jerry Springer of quantum grammar. That's funny. Jeez, I wonder what the analogy would be for me then in that context. What talk show host would I be? <laughs> Maybe David Letterman. Have you heard about a British guy who talks about the claim to life? I forget his name. And when he does his YouTube, he has a picture of David Miller. Ego 0117. It's my best knowledge cultivated guess that you are talking about. Colon Mark hyphen lowercase K Kishon colon Christopher, who, by the way, was deleted from YouTube. YouTube. Deleted his channel and all his content. He is no longer on YouTube and he has been gone since, uh, I don't know, months ago. But I'm pretty sure that's who you're talking about. Mari Povich. I'm not real familiar with Mari Povich, but Mari Povich is not too far away from Jerry Springer. So that kind of hurts, man. That kind of hurts if that's how you see me. You hurt me in my feel goods, bro. Bro, I can't let that stand, bro. Ego 0117. If I see you out in the streets, bro, it's on sight. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> yes, I can type in his name right now. I will type in. His name. Exactly the way he types it. Now keep in mind, I am going to sick it because I know that it's not correct. But if you take everything before the sick, that's how he types his name. Mari is calmer and he helps families with the DNA test. Oh, yeah, that, that's the guy that says... And the test says, you are not the father. Ah, I can't even watch that stuff. That stuff is so sad to me. Mm -mm. My favorite talk show host is uh, David Letterman. His stuff with Madonna. I don't know if you guys ever seen that. His... When he interviews Madonna, gold. When Dave, when Dave starts roasting people, man, you don't even know it until you you're until half your body's blackened. Like he's so good at roasting, you don't even know you're being roasted usually until after you've been roasted. It's really funny. He's very clever. Of course, Carson. All right, before that. Johnny Carson, which probably I'd have to say the majority of individuals in this chat right now probably have no idea who Johnny Carson is, but he's the king, was the king of late night. No doubt about it. You're very welcome, Carmo. Thank you for the kind words. Do you know of any Parse apps that can read documents and tell you if they use fraudulent or wrong language? As far as I know, there is no such thing. 
I know that there have been people out there that have tried to develop such apps. But with my guess, no such app will ever be able to do that. The best app that you have that I can offer to you is right here. You do the work. You learn it. And you do it. Why would you want an app to be your authority? The best possible authority you can have is you. You put the work in. You invest the value and the energy and the sweat, the blood, and the tears in learning this. And then you become autonomous. And then you can do everything instead of relying on crutches and things like that. Does chat GPT know how to speak quantum grammar? I did a video on that actually not too long ago where I challenged uh, an AI entity and they had no clue. So my answer to that is no. And I don't think that it ever will be able to do that because it does not know how to tell the difference between what a tangible contract word and what a non-tangible contract word is. It doesn't possess that capacity. That's not to say that it won't possess the capacity in the future, but as of right now, no, it doesn't. Does not possess the capacity to credential tangible or non-tangible contract. I remember speaking with some uh, scientists or computer tech guys about AI, and they're pretty convinced, you know, that AI is going to be the downfall of mankind, that AI is going to wipe us out, just like in the Matrix. Reason being is that the biggest threat, the biggest threat to Mother Earth and the biggest threat to mankind and the biggest threat to all living creatures on planet Earth is who? It's mankind. We are not a boon to this planet. We're basically a curse. So if it's AI's job to protect us, if it's given that job, then it's going to wipe us out because we are the biggest threat to ourselves. I'm not worried about it. Challenge accepted. Oh, yes, everyone has said blood, sweat, and tears. You just have to want to do it. You have to want to commit to it. It's a choice. If you choose not to put the work in, well, then that's your choice. So the grammar is a Freemason based, according to Dave Miller. I've never heard him say that. So if, let's see, David Wynn Miller, adjective, adjective, pronoun, David Wynn Miller was in the military. So just because he's in the military at one point in time and he published correct sentence structure, does that make correct sentence structure a military-based uh, grammar? So I'm going to have to say, DBK, how can you create an app when you don't know the grammar? I definitely applaud you in your volition to create an app like that. But first, you have to get closure on the grammar in order to do that. Hello, David. There's a video on YouTube where he briefly explains. Ega0117, I have to say this, all right? I've been watching David Miller videos since the summer of 2017. I've seen just about, I've seen I'd have to say every David Wynn Miller video there is multiple times, thousands of hours of watching. I have never heard him say quantum grammar is a Freemason based grammar. I've heard him claim to be a 92nd degree Mason, but he's never said it's Freemason based. So if you're going to make that claim, you're going to have to give me a timestamp from a video. To prove your claim. Otherwise, there's no credibility to it. I will, of course, be learning this. I mean, I want to help others. DBK, I applaud your efforts again. And I have to say right here that any person that I've ever heard say, I will, of course, be learning this, like they say, I'm going to learn it. 
they don't say I am learning it. They say I'm going to learn it. Anyone who's ever said that has never followed through. Maybe you'll be the first. Have you performed a salvage on your birth certificate using a stamp and autograph? No, David, I haven't. That's a great question. No, I haven't. I have no volition to do that at all. Why would I want to salvage something like that that has nothing to do with me or my everyday uh, existence? There's no reason to. I only salvage things that have practical purposes to me, like uh, the passport, a driving license, you know, things like that. Birth certificate has no bearing on me whatsoever. The name that's on there is not my name, has nothing to do with me. So therefore, no, I don't have anything to do with that. Don't care about it, really. I did do a video years ago where I showed proof. I showed an actual continuance of the evidence that my birth, not my birth certificate, stop and correct, that the birth certificate that was given to me is actually traded on the stock market and worth billions of dollars. And it's owned by some fellow in California. At, well, I don't know who owns it now. It may have been traded. But some fellow in California, I think he's of Jewish origin, a business guy. I show this. You can go back through my videos and just look up uh, certificate of birth. Yeah, certificate of birth. Search that on my YouTube channel and the video will come up. And I show you how I did it. I scanned the QR code or the barcode on the birth certificate and I opened that link and I followed it through the QCIP numbers and all that stuff. So that's the long answer. The short answer is no, because I have no interest in such things. I know there are people out there that claim that they want to uh, somehow access those billions of dollars that they think are connected to that birth certificate. But me, I, I don't care. I don't want that. I don't want anything that's not mine. That if, if there is billions of dollars associated with the birth certificate that was given to me, it's not mine. I don't care. I don't want it. I didn't earn it. So I want no part of it. Play fiction games, get fiction prizes. I feel the curse of employee life, headache, and twisting fracking. Well, this does not constitute medical advice or anything like that. This is for education and entertainment purposes only. But I find that um, a good solution to headaches and things like that is drinking water, that has not been modified, that has no chemicals in it, and it's pure. And you don't have to drink eight, eight ounces of water a day. Just drink when you're thirsty, but make sure the water is good. All right. So again, if any of you viewers out there are actually serious about learning the grammar, if you want to put your, you know, the rubber to the road, you want to step up, you want to pull up and actually do what you say, contact me at jasonmatthewg17 at gmail.com and apply for a workshop. I find that most people, if they're consistent with their study, can learn this grammar in five to six workshops. I've had some people learn it in one single one-hour session. Unfortunately, okay, the person that learned it in one one-hour session was actually a physicist. They had a master's degree in physics, and they learned it in one session. However, they didn't keep up with it and they completely lost it in like three or four months time because they didn't use it. 
This is definitely something you have to do every single day. Because if you don't, you will lose it. Until you get to that critical mass point where, boom, it's like a click. And then it's like riding a bike. Then you never forget it. But it takes a long time to get to that point. For the finite mean of the closer, or for the closer of the finite mean, when creating your own dictionary, how can the cause be the finite mean? How can the cause be the finite mean? The finite mean is what comes after the cause. Not sure I understand your question, David. You don't know how you can give meaning to a word? Is that what you're saying? Here comes your closure. Here comes my closure on what a finite mean is, David. Now I do ask. I can't stop people from plagiarizing me, but I do ask that you don't plagiarize me. That you don't copy and paste what I share with you. Because that's definitely a bad habit to develop. Because then you're making me the authority of your words. But that's my closure on what a finite mean is. For the finite mean of the known is with the claims of the closure fact and of the knowledge with the content of the communication particle with the cognizable form or the performance contract of the symbol command with the certification and limit by the author. That is what a finite mean is. Also, David, think about it logically. When you're creating a dictionary, I highly recommend Google, just simply Google how to create a dictionary. How do you be a lexicographer? How do you and research that? Research how people create dictionaries. Look at other dictionaries. With the correct sentence structure dictionary, you're going to give closure to the fact that you are the author. Everything is coming from your cognition of your sensation. And that's where your knowledge comes from. The cognition of your sensations or your sensations or your cognitions. And then everything that follows that falls under that. The finite means. The cause, the concern, the possessive, the authority. It all comes from. For the claimant sensation of the cognition is with the claimant's knowledge of the facts, with the correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar, claims of the knowledge with the conveyance by the claimant, period, or something like that. It tells exactly where the, where the claimant's knowledge comes from. It comes from the claimant's cognition of the claimant's sensation. It's very logical. On down the line. You just got to research it, think about it, sit with it. Because think about it. Your dictionary is what governs your construct. If you don't have closure on, on what a cause is, then it's time to put the brakes on and think about it a little bit. Because if you don't have closure on what a cause is or how a finite me can have a cause, or where that cause comes from, then you're not going to be able to convey that to someone else in a situation under duress in a foreign vessel and dry dock or wherever you are. How are you going to take, you know, authority over something if you're not sure of what you're authoring? So it's a good idea to, it's always a good idea to study more, right? Thank you for that question. And thanks everybody for joining me. Again, if you're a member, you can rewatch this in the members section. I may edit it 
and put it out to the public, but it will not be the full video. The full video will be available to the members if they so choose to be a member and choose the loyalist contributor section. Sector. Thank you very much. If you'd like to learn correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar, contact me at the email address listed at the bottom of your screen. I will set up a 10 to 15 minute video consultation between you and me. You can ask me whatever you like, and I'll do the same, and we'll see if this is something that you're prepared to commit to. If you'd like to support the channel, click on the Join button underneath this video. There are two tiers of membership. Uh, the second tier has access to exclusive content not available to the public. Uh, hit the Subscribe button. Hit the Like button. Turn the notification bell to all so that you don't miss any of my premieres because I do post on a very consistent basis. Thank you again, and I'll see you in the next one.